Greetings. Thank you for being here. My name is Derek Michaels. I'm coming to you from Baltimore, Maryland, and this is Thursday Thoughts, episode number seven. We had this nor'easter come through yesterday and snow and ice and all of that stuff. Uh, there is always, for me, the absolute most beautiful day of the year and I'm not really into snow and I'm really not into ice but there is this magic moment the day after a big snowstorm where everything is covered in this blinding white blanket of snow and the sun is 10 times brighter than it ever really feels just because it's reflecting off of all of this and it's somehow freezing cold and and warm and cozy all at the same time to be out in that just trying to scrape ice off the car and all of that I felt really magical about it today so with all of this in mind it's just it's interesting for me to have this opportunity to reflect the day after the first big snowstorm and and consider like wow we're we're coming to the end of this crazy year and I'm nine months since my last gig and I'm seven episodes into this thing, whatever it is we're doing here together, uh, trying to learn how to deliver and connect and be, you know, embody a certain energy and, and set of ideas without having a saxophone in my face. And um, looking forward to that moment when I get to be out there in the world, uh, sharing that energy, you know, hitting the rele the pressure release valve of getting to play music in front of people and expanding that energy in the most beautiful way that I can. Um, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm not in a big rush for it to get here because I'm also recognizing that there have been some really beautiful aspects of being home alone for nine months also. And I would be remiss to pretend as if this whole year has been a wash and a, and a disappointment and just a giant frustration without any silver lining because for someone like me who gathers my energy alone to have nine months and counting to be able to let go of all of the demands of the external world and to just exist as I would exist if I were retired, I suppose, you know, I'm 35, far from retired. But it's interesting to kind of define ourselves by being on the hook to deliver inspiring work to the world again and again and again and again, tirelessly. That's the life of the artist in the 21st century. We are tireless fountains of absolute unbridled inspiration, right? I'll let you answer that for yourself. Um, I've had a lot of time to experience uh, the question of, am I a, a constant, un, uh, am, I, am I a bottomless source of inspiration and, and creative output or not? Uh, do I have a, a limiting perspective on what it is that that means? And if I feel like the answer is no, I'm not always at all times I'm not a plant that blooms flowers 12 months out of the year, right? If that's how I feel, am I able to make peace with that and understand that it's only natural to have a more complex seasonal uh, evolution? There's a cycle of creativity, of tremendous amounts of output and periods where we withdraw and we're a little bit more, you know, hermit-like perhaps and, and gathering energy in private to later again when we've welled up a whole mass of energy and work and, and readiness to go and push it out there again, then we do so. Um, it's been frustrating for me to see so many people, so many musicians, so many artists of, of different kinds um, this is going to sound harsh and I don't mean it to, but, you know, giving in to the pressure to deliver no matter what. But I do, I will say this, I think in considering that cycle, the cyclical nature that I'm talking about, uh, we don't all have the same cycle. Our seasons of creativity and inspiration and output and solitude and all of that from one individual to the next 
they don't necessarily all overlap and that's what's beautiful so you might see one person you know for a whole year have a crazy output tons of stuff happening really just like in their element out in the world making tons of creative stuff happen and one of their peers might have you know stepped out of the limelight for a while to develop something behind closed doors they're not necessarily signals that one person is being successful and the other is not we all are operating at different intervals so I would like to think that the folks who I see who have been pushing through this pandemic like bulldozers without letting anything stop them from performing live streaming recording all that stuff uh, it serves me well to be happy to know that these people in that part of their cycle where they need it to push some energy out of themselves into the world that that happened to overlap in a period of time where they could have the utmost amount of attention on what they were doing because so many of us who you know people like me who were really thankful for a break not because I don't want to be out there performing for all of you but because I have been desperately needing to step out of the limelight and and replenish some of this energy behind closed doors uh, with me not competing for your energy and the other people like me who are taking this opportunity to be hermits and, you know, uh, not taking it for granted, but taking advantage of the opportunity to just, all right, this is, ad in other words, this is advantageous and this is the way in which I'm going to live this to the fullest in order to serve my needs so that what comes out in the future is as authentic and genuine and positive for others as possible. If we're being genuine and honest with that and the folks who are performing and recording and creating and presenting through all of this have been genuine and authentic in their own cycle and their own need and their own motivations, then, you know, everything's in its right place. The frustration for me is that I know there are some people who feel the pressure. Well, I have to, you know, I got to keep delivering something. I've got to keep my internet presence up. I, if I'm not out on the scene playing even if I'm afraid of the implications of playing in public during a pandemic, if I'm not doing it, then I'm irrelevant, then, I, then I'm lost. And then, you know, you might feel the need to just keep, you know, you're, you're not trusting your own instincts, I guess. I'm going to hope that that's the vast minority of people who are giving in to that pressure. But I empathize with anyone feeling that pressure because it's, that is the expectation of the 21st century creative person. Endless, constant, bottomless well of creative output and inspiration. And we just can't stop, right? We're machines. No, we're not. We're human beings. We are sensitive individuals. And the world is going through a crisis and we're feeling that. We all feel it in different ways, but we're all feeling it. So this has been all over the place today. I don't really have any particular concise message, no bow to wrap around the present. Um, just a reflection on, wow, this snowstorm yesterday really made me feel like, yeah, three entire seasons, spring, summer, fall, we've made it, we've successfully completed presence and attention through all three of those seasons. And we've got one left before we hit a year since the start of all this stuff. And I can't wait to see and hear and experience what any of you who are watching this, who are developing anything, you know, uh, that will eventually come out on the other side of this thing. I mean that in a very wide open way. I don't have any particular plans for recordings and, you know, I'm not writing heaps of music. I don't have some big plan, some big grand vision of how I'm going to come through on the other side of this reigning champion of my own little world. It's more so just the attention I've been able to cultivate in really looking at what's right in front of me and really, really tasting my food, really hearing the silence, really hearing the sound of my own horn when I'm practicing and really just rising to the occasion to love what it is for what it is that's happening. You know, uh, that whatever that is, if I can take a little bit of that with me, that nurtured attention into the next phase of life, I'll be a happier person than I ever was before the pandemic. And that will have to make my interactions and my deliveries of music for a, an audience out there that much more enriching for both me and anybody who is listening. 
uh, and for the wonderful musicians that I love to play with, you know, uh, that is really good, honest, hard work to do that, to invest that kind of energy. So don't sell yourself short. This period of time isn't about uh, proving how productive you've been. It's about gathering energy, releasing unnecessary feelings of obligation. And if there's anything I'd like to invite all of you to consider, it's what are some aspects of the beautiful rejuvenating period of being alone and having having a little bit more space and freedom in the course of this pandemic scenario what are some aspects of that that you can uh, gift yourself in the next phase whenever we're out of this and we're back into something more normal and we're busy again what aspects of this solitude can you hang on to for your own personal uh, wellness and what are some aspects of what you're longing for on the other end that feel like they're missing right now. How can you, how can we as a community uh, make the most of what that is and not assume that we have to present music in places where people aren't really there to listen? Uh, what can we do to create joyous events that celebrate the fact that we get to do this again and people get to meet in the same room and check that out and be fully involved? What is that? What does that total involvement look like? What does it feel like? What aspects of it are we cultivating on our own so that it just radiates, right? Uh, so that that connects with the people around us when we're around other people again. And what are some ways that we can start creating a vision for what the next uh, era might look like for us so that we can hit the ground running in making things happen in a little different way than they might have had we not had this wake up call in 2020. So that's all from me. Thanks for checking this out. Uh, check out baltimoresaxophone.com if you're interested in other episodes of the show here or you're looking for some music to check out. I've got some videos there. If you're looking for lessons, I teach those as well. There's a whole page on that. Derek Michaels signing off. I'll catch you guys next week.